my name is Kathy Cole. I've been teaching in the Rochester School District for about, um, well, I have 25 years of experience, but not all of those years are here in Rochester. I taught for three years in the Wani system, took about 10 years off when my girls were small, and then came back to teaching on a volunteer basis at first, and then got paid for one day a week, then two, and gradually from three to four and um, ended up the last 15 years or so I've been full-time. Um, I teach K through 2 music for one more day. It's hard to believe that that career is coming to an end, but I'm looking forward to retirement too. Um, I got my start in education, I guess, through wonderful teachers in elementary school, uh, junior high and high school. I went to school in the state of Pennsylvania and had some very good teachers who cared a lot and were um, very creative and were a good example for me. And um, I, then I studied at Huntington University and um, taught in the Wani system, like I said, and then took some time off before I came here. Um, my most memorable moment from teaching is hard to nail down, and I'm sure that's true of everyone, but probably um, it would be that three or four times a year, the hard work of putting a concert together and then standing in front of the students and hearing them do their best and all come together. And um, that was very satisfying and very rewarding and um, lots of fun. Sometimes I would just get chills, you know, up and down my spine at a concert just because finally it all came together and it was such a reward to see that happen. Um, one of the most satisfying things I have found in being a music teacher is seeing the students grow in their knowledge and confidence from kindergarten to second grade. And some who didn't even want to, to hold a little poster or something in kindergarten want to do a uh, solo by the time they're second graders. And that's always fun to watch that growth. And also to see many students through the years go on to major in music or to just have music as a love of their life. It doesn't matter if they're a music major, but you know, a lot of them are in a church choir or a community band of some sort. And that's rewarding just to see that kids um, go on and use music to help themselves enjoy their lives. So that has been very satisfying. Um, I think one of the things that I'll miss most about teaching is the people that I work with. The people here at Columbia are wonderful and they really work together and are very positive and do whatever it takes to make students succeed. And so I will miss each one of them. Each one's very different and yet um, each one has gifts and abilities that make the system work well together. I'll also miss my fellow music teachers. Um, we become very close through the years and worked well together. And so I'm definitely gonna miss that. And of course, I will miss the students um, and the hugs and smiles that children this age give you every day. So I think I'll miss the people, whether it would be staff or students. Um, <clears throat> one thing that uh, also was very satisfying the last 10 years or so here at Columbia. I um, was the person who did the box tops for education and each year that earned us between a thousand and two thousand dollars. So each one of those crazy little box tops that you cut off of a cereal box really add up and they're worth 10 cents a piece. So if you are not used to saving those, please do and bring them to either Riddle or Columbia. But that money has gone to help pay for everything from a new stage curtain to the music we use for concerts to new instruments for our music classroom and now um, when I leave Tori Watson is going to be taking it over she is uh, a special needs teacher and of course they have lots of things that they can use money for as well and I'm sure that if the music department needs something in the future she'd be happy to share as we sometimes shared with PE and other departments um, as far as 
what I plan to do with my free time. I have lots of projects that I'm behind on at home, so I'll enjoy that because I've always been kind of a homebody, but uh, I've enjoyed working all these years, but it'll be nice just to be at home, to sleep in a little bit. Um, a couple of years ago, my husband and I bought an RV, so we hope to do some traveling. We have a trip to Europe planned. Of course, we won't be taking an RV there, but we are planning to do that next spring, so we're excited about that. And then, of course, we are really looking forward to spending more time with our five grandchildren and maybe a, a couple of more in the future. And we're active in our church, so it will be rewarding to, to spend some time doing those things that I've had to put on the back burner all these years. As far as advice for younger teachers or people aspiring to become teachers, I would just say be ready for hard work because it is hard work, but it's very rewarding. It's challenging at times. Um, you'll see lots of changes. I kind of joke sometimes that everything and nothing changes about education. It seems like we're always making changes and yet it's just the same stuff called by a different name really through the years. Um, except for probably technology, and that's been a big change since I started in the 70s, and um, it's been fun to watch that as it emerges as a huge factor in education. Be sure that you love kids if you're gonna be a teacher, and that you genuinely care about them, because they can tell. And just stay positive, because through all of those changes and those interpersonal relationships, if you stay positive and choose to have a good attitude about it, it will go much smoother. And anybody who goes into education, I wish you the best. And I, w I just want to take a second to thank the Rochester community. Our three girls grew up here. Um, they had scholarships. and. Um, the community has been very good to my husband and, and myself and our family, and so I just want to say thank you for being a great place to live and work. Uh, my name is Penny Duncan, and I've been a, a teacher here at Rochester Community Schools for 32 years uh, at the high school, and I teach family and consumer sciences. Um, I have taught a total of 34 years. My first two years I taught in the Whitco school system as a middle school facts teacher. Um, I went to Ball State University for my undergraduate and I went to IPFW and got my master's in secondary education from Purdue University. Um, one of the most important things that I find satisfying about being a teacher for me has been when I would see my past students many years later and they would tell me some of the things that they had used from my class that they still use to this day and that's really uh, makes you feel good that you know that they still have some of those things that they uh, enjoyed. What will I miss most about teaching? Uh, it's probably when I would have a student have that aha moment when they would finally get a concept or an idea and you could see it all click. And that was those magic moments that you have with education. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I plan to spend my free time. I like to read and I like to sew. I've said all along I want to try and take better care of myself, walking more, biking more. Um, getting better rests and things like that. I also have uh, a new granddaughter that I want to spend time with and I'm getting my second grandchild in June. So I plan to spend some quality time with my grandchildren. Um, the advice that I would give to younger people aspiring to be teachers. Well, you really have to have a true dedication uh, to this profession to be a teacher. It is probably one of the hardest jobs that you'll ever do besides parenting. But it, it can be a very rewarding um, job that you can do. You should be prepared for many hours of long, hard work. And you should always keep in mind that if you make a difference in one child's life, um, you've, done a, you've done a good job. And that's what I hope that I've done is I've helped maybe at least one child in my life. Hello, I'm Joanna Jana, and I have taught second grade at Columbia Elementary for 39 years. Um, in fact, I was a kindergartner when Columbia was brand new, and that dates me a little bit. Um, it has been a, a great teaching experience. I 
received my uh, degree from Ball State University, my undergraduate work, and then I went to Indiana University to get my master's um, in, t in elementary ed also. But I do think that teaching is quite a family thing. Uh, my dad, Paul Rockwell, taught for 40 years, and many of those were in the Rochester schools. My brother, Spike Rockwell, taught biology. And currently, my daughter, Kristen Jana, is teaching first grade at North Miami. So we definitely have a line of, of teachers. Um, when asked what my most memorable moment was from teaching, there are so many that I can't just single one out. Uh, it's, it's been a wonderful career. I've met a lot of wonderful students, a lot of, of wonderful co-workers along the way. Many of my co-workers uh, that I started with have retired. There are very few left in the building. Um, so I, I really can't single out one particular thing that it was uh, most memorable. Um, when I was asked what the most satisfying thing about being a teacher is, I would have to say that every year you have new faces, you have new challenges, new goals, and the growth from the beginning of the year until the end of the year is amazing. And whether you've taught one year or 39 years, uh, every year you're just in awe at the end how much they've learned. And uh, so that's been very, very rewarding. And not only just the, the academics, but their social growth too. And that's imp an important part. What will I miss most about teaching? Um, the children. Um, they're delightful and uh, I will miss them. Um, spending my time after retirement, I plan to travel with my husband Wayne, um, visit our children that live out of town, and uh, spend more time in my yard and my flower garden and get out on Lake Manitou during the week when it's not quite so busy. And I will look forward to that. And I think one of the most important things is uh, I'm going to enjoy not setting that alarm clock because I'm tired of going to bed when I because I have to and getting up because I have to. And so I look forward to that. Um, if I had any advice for younger teachers or people maybe wanting to go into the field, um, I would say, first of all, you know, be sure they get a good, solid background of the basics that they need to build on. And always remember that every child is unique. Every child wants to be loved praised and respected, and you can find the good in all children. And uh, there's a quote on my desk um, that I've had for a long, long time, and it says, in God's eyes, we all sparkle like the stars. And just keep that in mind. Thank you. Hi, I'm Betty Martins, and I've been teaching for 36 years. And I'm Mark Martins. I've been teaching for 33 years. Um, the last 22 years, I've taught here in Rochester at the middle school and at Columbia for one year. And then my, 14, my first 14 years were at Tibby Valley at Akron Elementary. I've been at Rochester Middle School for 33 years. Started out teaching math, uh, all three grade levels, then moved to seventh grade math, and have finished up my career uh, as the head teacher slash assistant principal at Rochester Middle School. Well, between our two families, we have, I think, 14 teachers. Uh, both of my parents were teachers. My dad was a teacher, coach, principal, and he was the county superintendent here in Fulton County. He, uh, all but a few years uh, were in Fulton County. He had a couple in La Fountain, but the rest were at Fulton, Kiwana, Richland Center, Leiters Ford, Riddle, and uh, my mother taught at Kiwana and at uh, Columbia. Um, two of my siblings are teachers, actually all of them ended up in teaching, and uh, as well as two in-laws. <laughs> so we have a lot of education in our family, and I think it was just seemed like a, I always said it was genetic. So whether or not that's the case, but that's what I always thought it was. As for me, uh Education was not necessarily my first choice. Uh, uh, it was a different direction I had chosen and uh, had kind of fallen uh, into teaching as an alternative to what I had been previous been, pre previously been doing. And um, as Betty mentioned for her, uh, teaching did feel kind of natural with uh, my mother teaching, my sister and uh, my brother-in-law teaching and then my sister-in-law also being a teacher and then everybody on Betty's side it seems like is a teacher. So, uh, Well we were discussing this and there are 
a whole lot of memorable moments over the course of this many years and some really hilarious, funny, funny, funny stories. But, um, and lots of memorable things, good things, sweet things, um, sad things. But um, the one that came to mind, that my sister reminded me of it yesterday, was the night that we spent the night at the school because of the sudden blizzard. And this was in, I, we were trying to figure it out, I believe it was in the winter of 1980. Um, Mark was student teaching at fourth grade with Mrs. Mead, I think, at, Mead, at, at yeah. Riddle. And uh, I was over at Akron. All the area superintendents um, were at a meeting or something, I believe, in South Bend. And this was, of course, before we even had radios in buses. We couldn't get a hold of bus drivers or anything without phoning them. And uh, seriously, in the morning, it was a beautiful day. No bad weather. By about 10, it started to snow. I remember looking out thinking how beautiful those little snowflakes were floating down. And by, um, by about 11, it was a blizzard. And it was, you couldn't even, my, build, my room was on the west side of Akron Elementary. And you couldn't even see 19 from my room. They called the kids in from the playground because they were afraid they were going to lose some in the snow. And um, the... Uh, Dr. Kramer, who's now, I think, their business manager at this point, he uh, came by our room because we didn't even have an intercom in our in our rooms at that time. So he came door to door and said, uh, the buses will be here at one o'clock. Make sure you have your kids in their boots and their coats and you have your coat on and you get out of here as soon as the kids leave and get on the buses. Um, at that time also, Akron had two buildings. The old junior high, which is where the gym is um, at this point, but they tore down the old part of the, of the building. And then our place, and then the buses were to park between them. And so we looked out and there were a couple of buses that had managed to get in. We were very hopeful. So we we're all standing there with our coats on, sweating, of course, because it's like 75 in the building and, and yet it's freezing outside. And we stood there and we stood there and we stood there and and finally, after probably, I think, about a half an hour, Ms. Dodger Kramer came by and he said, uh, you might be thinking of, just very quietly to each of us in the hall, you might be thinking about what to do this evening. And we all kind of went, this evening? Hmm. <laughs> and so what happened was um, we had to spend the afternoon, I believe it snowed and blew until, um, I don't know whether it was dark. It, time flies when you have 23 kids running around your room going, we're spending the night, we're spending the night. <laughs> Somehow the teachers weren't as enthusiastic about it. But anyway, <laughs> um, as I recall, the kids, after it stopped blowing so badly, the kids in town, many of the kids in town, their parents walked to the school and walk them home um, and a couple of the more elderly teachers were allowed to go to um, uh, Kay Broyette lived a block, or less than a block like two houses from the school and they went to her house so that they didn't have to spend the night in the school and kids got picked up and this was way before four-wheel drive vehicles and all this stuff kids got picked up on some snowmobiles Lots of tractors came in to get their children. <laughs> and um, then we, we showed every movie in the building. Now this was before also, before DVDs, before VCRs. And I mean, we tried to round up as oh, many. Real, real, real to, to real. real you know, yes, yes, you had those movies. You wouldn't movies. understand. You, <laughs> no idea what those are. But, uh, but we rounded up as many of those, uh, I think my, second graders watched a movie on locomotives. I'm sure they were highly entertained by that. Um, so, and we had the, one of the ironic things was, you know, we had this kitchen and uh, no offense to any of our cooks that are still listening to this, <laughs> but I know they were trying to make do with whatever the meals were set for the rest of the week, but we had a pot about this big of beans with perhaps one hot dog slightly chopped up in it. We're not sure whether there was any hot dog in it or not. Most of us didn't see that. And um, we later thought of all the things to feed people that were gonna spend the night with all these children. That perhaps wasn't the best thing, but um, 
but by the end of the evening, we had pooled all the children, like all the first graders ended up staying in one room, all the second graders stayed in one room. The fire department, I believe, brought blankets down and things like that. And uh, anybody, and this is of course back when they had tile floors. So in most people, no one had carpet in their rooms. But some of us had hunks of carpet that we had brought back for reading corners and things. So uh, whoever had a big carpet in their room, that's where the kids stayed. And um, so we spent the night in the school. Uh, we had, I don't know, 20, less than 30 second graders by the time it was time to get everybody to lie down. And that was a challenge. It was probably 11 o'clock before everybody got settled down. And, um, it was just a very interesting experience. Of all days, I had worn a skirt, so I didn't even have pants on to lay down on the floor. So it was, uh, yeah, that was, and when I told my students that over the years that we spent the night in the school, they couldn't believe it. But Rochester kids spent the night, Valley kids, I, I think, uh, Caston, I mean, there were lots of schools that this happened to because they couldn't reach the superintendents to call off school in time, and it just was a freak storm. So. Yeah, I would say that was probably, that only did happen once. Lots of funny stories happen more than once, but that's still, <laughs> that would happen only once. I'm kind of glad it only happened once, but <laughs> that's my funny story. Well, that's, that's not my funny story, but I, I will say <laughs> that uh, being a student teacher, uh, you try to do whatever you can to make sure that people know you're committed and dedicated and what have you. And, uh, I think I was the only male in the building, so I was in charge of most of the boys, and they pretty much so said, okay, there's a certain group of boys that can be a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a challenge, so we'll let you stay with them. So that was, that was uh, my... Thanks. My, part of my student teaching experience. Um, I, I thought about this uh, as far as what was the probably one of the, the more interesting situations that, that occurred. I've told this, uh, of course can't use names now, uh, but I can use Mike Zaner's name. Uh, I had a young a little boy that uh, had, um, had reports in the office that he had brought a knife to school and of course that's not a good thing to do. But uh, I was told that he had stuffed it down his uh, pants and uh, so uh, I talked to the, to the kid and I said, I understand you have a knife. And he was pretty hardened. And uh, so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try a little intimidation. So I got Mike Zayner, you know, little Mike. Um, <laughs> and uh, I put the kid on one side, I put Mr. Zayner on the other, and I was put on the other. And both of us said, Mike, let's stand up and we'll, we'll see if we can just kind of intimidate him a little bit. Well, this little bugger was not to be not to be intimidated at all. So I said, okay, here's what's gonna happen. I said, please stand up, and he, he cooperated. I said, let's move the chair. And I said, I want you to do jumping jacks until I tell you to stop. So the little booger started doing jumping jacks, and it was a little sixth grader, and he was just one of the smaller sixth graders we had. And he was jumping, oh, for maybe a minute, and uh, sure enough, uh, Coach Z goes, uh, Mr. Martins, I think we got results, and those little guys still doing his jumping jacks while the knife had made its way down the pant leg and was, and was on the floor. And uh, I think it rattled around a little bit. And uh, I said, well, you can stop now. He goes, okay. I said, so uh, tell me about the knife on the floor. Well, what knife? I said, well, the knife that's on the floor. Well, that's not my knife. <laughs> And so, not his knife. I don't know how uh, got there. <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, that's, I'll just stop the story there. But that, I got a, I've gotten a little bit of mileage out of that uh, over the years, <laughs> thanks to Mike Zayner. Well, that was a hard, that was a hard one. Um, there's a lot of things that are very satisfying about teaching, and to just narrow it down to one was, was hard. I had, I had one written down, and then this morning, when I was getting ready, I decided that, um, I think, I think the most satisfying thing for me is to have students greet me in the grocery or in the uh, any uh, hardware or in the subway or or uh, you know Gerettis and say, "Oh, hi, Mrs. Martins, how are you?" And just it makes me feel like I have um, a relationship with them. Um, 
was good. And um, I know there were there were students over the years that that I didn't have as a good a relationship as I would have liked, <laughs> or they they would have liked. But um, it really uh, it really does touch me when kids remember me or on Facebook. Oh, I love Miss Martin's class. We sang these songs and we did this, and you know that's uh, that's been I think over the years. At first, when I first started teaching, I probably never would have said that. <laughs> but uh, now it really, it really does mean a great deal. So I guess that's the satisfying part. Excuse my <laughs> lack of composure. <laughs> um, when I first started teaching, um, it was the instant gratification that really, um, that I really thrived on. Uh, knowing that a lesson was done well and you could see the little light bulbs pop up on the kids. Uh, not literally, but uh, you could see the light in their eyes uh, that they understood uh, and were getting a uh, connection with math. And For me, math was always fun and um, when I could see kids talk about wanting to come into the classroom because they, were, they knew they were going to have fun, I knew that that connection of that emotion with math was going to make a, a big impact. Um, and then I would say also uh, that uh, I've had a couple kids over the last few years uh, that I've had to unfortunately deal with on a discipline side which was my responsibility at the middle school that have had come back and said you know Mr. Martens I'm, I'm glad that you really took the time to uh, work with me and, and redirect me because it's made a difference in my life and uh, one young man was really, we're really proud of the fact that he was eligible to go to the military in particular, which was very rewarding. Oh, probably just the funny things that happen every day. Because <laughs> almost every day there's just something in some class. Um, and in, in some, even in when I taught second grade at Akron and had the kids all day, funny things would happen and kids would say just adorable, innocent things that later on, they th probably thought, oh, I might probably shouldn't have said that in class. Uh, but I think uh, the interaction with the kids is um, is really special. And I think um, I had a friend who, my best friend, who um, was a teacher for 10 years. And then since that time, she is um, is in private business. And she said she, does, she teaches Sunday school so she gets her kid fix because she still loves to have a relationship with kids and I think uh, I think those are the kinds of things that'll that'll be some things that'll be difficult to replace more than anything um, and when I read re count I always I've always said I'm gonna write a book I write down all these funny things and I'm gonna write a book you know and um, who knows that could happen but part of the part of the story usually is who they were so you usually can't use their real name <laughs> So I probably won't do that, <laughs> but I think, I probably think that's probably, and the interaction with my colleagues, I mean, it's, uh, it's really important to have relationships with the people you work with, and everybody from our cooks and custodians and secretaries and nurses, and uh, we've had all kinds of great experiences, and administrators, don't let me forget them, <laughs> over the years. <laughs> So I think that's probably what I'll miss more than anything. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to miss the energy. The energy of the kids, uh, the energy of the staff. Um, it, you know, middle school is a love it or hate it kind of an age level. And uh, it can be quite a roller coaster ride for the kids uh, with their emotions being so high when they enter a class and so low when they exit a class. Um, that being able to grab that energy and use it in, in a productive way is, is the part that, um, you know, I, I think I'm going to miss the most of, of education. I've, I've worked with some great teachers, uh, some master teachers, I've worked with some wonderful administrators over the years, and I appreciate all those moments that I've had with them and everything I've learned from my colleagues. Um, but. Um, I guess the most I've learned from middle school kids is, you know what, no matter how low the low is or high the high is, they celebrate both of them with the same gusto. 
Uh, it could be a bucket full of tears or just a, a mountain of laughter and uh, that has been, it's been such a great experience and such a great ride. I've really appreciated it. My pat answer has been any way I want. That's <laughs> because I get to decide. <laughs> um, number one, I'll, I love playing the piano and so I'm going to still accompany my Max and Cookie Singers group and um, I'll still direct my choirs at church, my bell choir and the chancel choir. I'll still be a part of Sai Iota Sai, which I've been a part of for years, and um, all those and other church responsibilities on committees. Um, we like to travel. We're hoping to get to a lot of the national parks that we've been to already, but also we want to, we, one of the goals is to get to Alaska sometime since we haven't managed to get that in our schedule. and. Um, We'd like to go to Europe again, and um, uh, excuse me. Apparently, I would like to go to Europe again. <laughs> That's okay. I can arrange it. <laughs> um, you know, I travel. I love to read and relax, and I and I am really looking forward to being able to choose just when I get to do things. And there are some things that'll be scheduled, like the singers and things, but. Uh, I, I like the idea of saying I can go down and see my sister, or my brother, or my children, and Sadie and Katie can and can call me and say, "Oh, I need this done." And well, they kind of do that anyway. But uh, <laughs> hopefully, it'll be just more on my schedule. <laughs> well, for me, it, it's going to be having time to help support Betty and, and the things that she does, and and support our kids. There's been many a time where um, being Taking care of athletics, uh, hours are a little bit longer than normal for most people, and uh, so I've I've celebrated many birthdays of my girls uh, in the teachers' lounge at the middle school because I've had a ball game that I was supervising, uh, so we'd take a little break uh, and uh, have some cake and ice cream and uh, or whatever the case would be that, that Betty <laughs> thankfully would take care of and bring things in. Um, so uh, as, as both girls are getting grown, uh, I want to be able to support them as much as I can because uh, I'll have the time to do that and certainly uh, be able to appreciate Betty a lot more. So. But wait, what's the number one thing? <laughs> You're leaving it out. Golf. He, oh, don't let him well. fool you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will be searching. I'll be searching for a golf game that I, I, I thought, I, I think I used to have. But it, <laughs> We'll find out, uh, but I will be I will be playing some golf too. Well, the first thing I thought of was, don't let the high stakes testing pressure that is enormous uh, right now. Don't let that stand in the way of developing close relationship with your students, because you it takes time to build those relationships and. In the middle of, I, I felt that uh, being in the choir department the last 16 and a half years of my career, uh, it's a very different kind of pressure. There is still pressure because you've got 200 kids or 250 kids on the stage and their parents are expecting to see them do things. And, 50 and in a classroom at a time. 50, to, well, at one point I had 75 in a class, but we won't talk about it anyway. <laughs> That was more like crowd control more than anything. But um, but I feel badly for the language arts and math teachers and you know, eventually it'll be, or is it science two now or social studies, um, you know, that are tested and the pressure is so great about we have to cover this and this. And I think um, I think that takes away from the, from the opportunities to get your, to know your kids. and. It's hard to get to know 120 or 250 kids. Um, so my, one of my goals the very first day of school was always to know all my kids' names by the end of the first day. And in choir, since I had the seventh and eighth graders the year before, I only had to worry about the kids that moved in, which was good, or, or joined. But I still had to learn 80 to 100 sixth graders in the first day. And I always wanted to know their first names because kids, you say their names wrong again and again, or you you um, don't remember their names in the hallways, and they they get a little lost. They feel like 
they're not important and um, so I think that is know your kids as well as you can and don't let that pressure stand in the way of getting taking time to get to know them because you you never know how much impact you're going to have till later and uh, I have two girls <laughs> that have told me they're teachers today because they were in my class which I'm sure lots of other teachers really did have impacts on them too but um, those are the those are the things you know and I know we didn't sit we don't sit down and say now I'm going to develop a relationship with you and you, you know but that is a, a really important thing especially today when we have so many children who really don't have guidance at home don't have that loving kind of nurturing environment that we were blessed to grow up in and, and a lot of kids do have that today but uh, a lot of them don't so I would say that's uh, my number one piece of advice for people going into education these days. And I would pretty much so echo that. I think I think if you're going into, into, into education it's because you care about kids. If you care about kids you're going to get you're going to take the time to to get to know about them and know who they are and and understand their background and their family life as much as you can because that makes all the difference of, of a child's success. And one thing I've learned about kids is most kids really believe, really want to please the adults. I think they really do. And uh, if you know them, they're going to want to please you. So um, every kid has good in them. And I've, I've spent the last how many years? Too many. Um, dealing with kids that are misguided or make poor choices, and they, even they want. I mean, they want to do. Well, they want to please you. They want to do what's right, and uh, so get to know the kids, and that's that's what I would say. Hi, I'm Eileen Fellers, and I've taught school for 31 years. I'm Stephanie Barkman, and I've been a teacher for 39 years. I'm Susie Marvel, and I have taught for 18 years. I have taught at Rochester for 28 years. Uh, I started at uh, North Miami High School, where I was three years older than my students, my very first year, which was <laughs> rather interesting. Um, but I was there three years, then I stayed home with my uh, little ones uh, for the next nine years, and I've been back at Rochester Middle School since, uh, for the past 28 years. Rochester has been stuck with me the entire 39 years. I hope that they don't feel that way, but uh, I've been at Rochester. I started as a third grade teacher. I took Miss Thrush, Thrush's place um, in third grade. I started the, the year after the tornado that, that fall of 74. And so that was an interesting start. And um, then I taught third grade for 20 years. I moved to fifth grade for three years and I didn't realize it but I think they were preparing me for the middle school and then I uh, spent the rest of those years at Rochester Middle School in sixth grade. I was an instructional assistant for special needs students for the first half of my years at Columbia here in Rochester and then at the middle school and then the high school. I've been so lucky to work in in all all except riddle i've worked in all the buildings and i really enjoyed and was amazed and so uh, pleased to see what a wonderful uh, staff we have in every single building we just i i got a unique view because i got to be in each of those buildings and we really have a wonderful school system then my last uh, half of my teaching years were as a media coordinator, which is a fancy name for librarian, at Columbia, and then at uh, the middle school. You know, uh, one of the things that I told during our school uh, reception for the retirees was that when I, when I started teaching in the fall of 74, the building had been, the Riddle building had been hit by the tornado. And 
as I went into the classroom, my first job, uh, and it was everyone's job, was to get that building organized and get the desks in the rooms and just get the, the, man, the, the manual work completed. And we had to postpone the beginning of school for a week. So consequently, the way it, the timing went, I was sitting in my classroom in the late afternoon School was going to start the next day, and Russell Walters, who was the principal at Riddle at that time, he came in and handed me my first paycheck, which, oh my word, you know, after going to college, you know, you pay them to uh, go to school, and I received my first paycheck. I hadn't met my first student yet, <laughs> but I got my first paycheck before I ever met my first student. So that was kind of an interesting story for that beginning of my career. <laughs> Must have made you think it was going to be a rewarding <laughs> profession. <laughs> well, I certainly got paid for the manual labor at that point because that was what we had done throughout the summer. I went to Manchester College and I um, completed my bachelor's degree there in three years and then I did my master's through IU. I actually started at Akron in first grade with Mrs. Kinder and when I was in third grade I uh, admired my teacher so much that I wanted to become a third grade teacher and I was lucky enough to get that position. And then when I graduated from Akron High School, then I um, attended Manchester College where uh, one year I roomed with Mrs. Spellers, except it was uh, Eileen Miller at the time. And we roomed together over at Manchester. We both graduated from Manchester and then I got my master's degree from um, Indiana University. And I graduated from Carmel High School and then went to Indiana University, Bloomington. We, we have really <laughs> struggled with this question um, because how do you get it down to one moment? There are lots and lots of um, times when you had special moments, uh, teaching moments and then funny things and then embarrassing times and things like that. Um, I uh, recall a day that I was in a small group with children and it started to snow outside and the kids were like, oh, it's snowing, it's snowing, you know, and you may as well just stop teaching and have the mm -hmm. teaching moment about snow and weather and all that stuff because you're not going to get anything else accomplished. So we all looked at the snow and they said, oh, we'll probably have to go home. And inwardly I was going, yes, yes, we're going to go home. But, you know, oh, probably not, probably not. And as it turned out, um, we did have a big snow. It was like in 78, 79, it was like in that time. And we had some really big snows for the older ones out there. You know that uh, we had banks of snow and we had uh, tunnels that we drove through in the country. And with that situation, uh, that's where it started that morning and the kids were saying we're probably going to go home and I said oh no we probably won't. The principals happened to be in a closed meeting I guess that day and it got bad before anyone really realized it and we had parents coming in and getting children and um, thank goodness for a guy with a big big truck he was able to take me home. I lived here in Rochester at the time so it wasn't a big deal but um, there were lots of people that ended up spending the night and um, supervising children. Um, that was a memorable time because I remember thinking, oh no, we won't go home. And I always say that to the kids. Oh, don't get excited about that. But always inwardly, I'm like, yes, yes, we're probably gonna go home. <laughs> but of course we have to make these days up so it's not as fun anymore as what it used to be. <laughs> right? That's right. That's we used true. to be able to not have to make those up at all. Mm -hmm. But oh, that changed. I can remember um, a not so pleasant day actually because it was uh, on 9-11 and uh, 
we were just kind of called out into the hallway to be informed of what's going on, not to turn our TVs on at the time, because no one was real sure what was happening. And that was hard because you go back in and try to carry on like nothing has happened and you know something horrible has. And, and then once the kids find out from each other, then you just stop what you're doing and talk with them and answer their questions as best as you can. Fortunately, that, that happens. That was a memorable moment. It really was, yes. Yeah, a day we'll never forget, any of us. I think my memorable moments have just been little ones, you know, the day-to-day -day things that happen. The last half of my teaching years were spent as librarian at Columbia and then at the middle school. And I think the moments when a student would come to my desk and say, Ms. Marvel, this is just the greatest book, and I don't like to read at all, but I love this book. And I thought, well, that is just wonderful that, that we have found a way to help this student enter the world of reading and get excited about it. And it's just those small moments that add up that I think are important. I have an, a bad time. I, I can remember it really, it was a bad event, but it wasn't anything that was horrible or anyone got hurt. Um, we were putting on a play and one of our backgrounds we had put on a map that rolls up and as we were practicing, well first of all you got to realize that at Riddle at the time we had two outlets in the room. One in the front of the room underneath the chalkboard and one um, at the back of the room beside where you hang the coats at and underneath the pencil sharpener. That's where the other one was. So if you had anything plugged in, it had to be in those locations. Well, we had an aquarium and it was sitting at the front of the room and plugged in and as we were practicing our play, we had to put the scene up, the picture up, and when the map rolled up, you know how they go fast sometimes. It went up fast, jumped off at the hinge, and crashed down onto the aquarium. Oh my! And, <laughs> and the glass, the stones, the fish, everything just went all over the place. And everybody just got dead silent. You know, you can just imagine. And I imagine they just thought I was going to go, ah, you know, and have a fit. And I was like, okay, now what do I do? Okay, everybody go to your seat. And I don't know what you want to do, but just be quiet. Let me figure this out. Meanwhile, the little fish are jumping. And <laughs> we had a mess, so we had to take turns picking up little stones and pieces of glass. No one got hurt, no one got cut. But from then on, and kids that I have had out there, you may remember me always saying, no, don't. Don't mess with the maps. I'll take care of the maps. So if it jumps off the hinge, it'll break me, you know. It'll uh, hit me and not hurt you. But that was a memorable moment. And I imagine the kids that were in the class that day, some of them may, may recall that day. I bet they do. And I hadn't even thought of that until I was sitting here and you said, little things, you know. <laughs> that was not little. Well, not at the moment, it wasn't. Oh my goodness, the, there's so many things, but the most satisfying, I think, is when all of a sudden you see in their eyes that they understand. Because a lot of kids struggle in math and it's just a difficult topic for many, many people. And they don't understand why it's relevant to their lives. And uh, it's, it's just when all of a sudden they get it and they, get, they smile and they just almost jump out of their seats saying, oh my goodness, we finally understand, you know. And that, that is so rewarding when they come in and I'm enthused about it and then you can see actually a little bit of, you know, reciprocating enthusiasm from them, which is wonderful. <laughs> and she got me through my math classes at Manchester and so I knew that if she could get me through Manchester with my math classes, she'd be a wonderful <laughs> teacher, and she made it. I, I, there were times I wasn't sure I was going to make it, but she taught me a lot of math, more than any of the professors did, I believe. But I think I always enjoy the moment when books that I have selected and ordered for the library, and I've put them out on the new shelf, and I see students 
rush up with excitement oh look at this and and they run up and check that out and it just it's that's satisfying to think that I've been able to choose things for students to read and and uh, get them excited about reading them. sure oh yes um, a satisfying moment that I can share is when I was teaching something I don't even know what it was that's the thing of it you know the things that you teach and the kids that learned those things probably don't remember what they taught, what they learned from you. And I don't remember what I was teaching to them. You just remember the connections that you have with the children and the events that happened in the classroom. But one time I had a situation where, and I'm, it probably happens in everyone's room at some time or other, but at one point I had explained something and said, okay, now, who, who still needs me to talk more about it? And this one little guy held up his hand, well, there were several that held up their hand, and another student said, don't worry, Mrs. Barkman, I can explain it better than you can. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He could. And he got it across to a couple of the other students, and you know, that was a, that was a, a message to me. You know, I'd had the training, I could, do it my way, but you know what? It takes everybody together to really make things happen. And that's the way it was in the classroom. Oh, it's just definitely those day-to-day -day, uh, reactions and interactions with the kids. They, they, they make you smile, they make you laugh at some of the things you hadn't even thought of, or just realizing their interpretation of what you've been trying to do with them and the way that they like you just said, sometimes they uh, help their peers to understand something. And I love just standing back and listening to them explain their interpretation of what I was trying to get across to them. But just the, oh gosh, the day to day. Every day is different. Every hour is different. Every class seems to take on its own personality, it seems. And just, you could interact with them in different ways and it's very, very rewarding. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> I think that um, just having a part in students' lives and then seeing them, because we're a small town, we often know about those same students as they become adults and seeing the contributing people that they become in our community and, and um, that's, that's something that I have appreciated is being a part of their lives and, and seeing that they become successful, happy people. <laughs> I never seem to have a problem with that in the uh, spring, summer, and fall months because I'm outdoors a lot. I enjoy working outside in my flowers and just being out there. Um, winter, I'm not exactly sure yet, uh, but I just look forward to just a totally different feeling about every day when you wake up and usually I'd get, be getting up and rushing around and thinking of the day ahead about all I need to get accomplished at school. I'm not going to have that. It's, it's going to be very different. I hope I can adjust to it okay. I'm a little worried about it but looking forward to it at the same time. I am looking forward to new adventures and um, I like to travel so I'm sure some of my adventures will be traveling and uh, I also love fabric and I bought fabric through the years with the idea that one of these days I'm gonna have time to sew with it so I'm looking forward to that also. Um, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I, um moved closer to town uh, in the last couple of years and have um, a big yard and a home to take care of and I have nine grandchildren and three of them are in Minnesota. I'd like to go see them and spend a lot of time uh, going to their activities and supporting them and helping them and the kids uh, in their lives. I uh, will uh, enjoy not having to set the alarm, um, but I'm kind of 
like what Eileen said, I've never had any trouble staying busy. And I'm way behind on any scrapbooking and stuff like that. And I, I kind of like to cook if I have time to. And I should have time to do those kind of things, which I'm, I feel very blessed that I have the opportunity to be able to, to do that because some people don't have the opportunity to retire and, um, and enjoy it. Uh, education and working with kids is so rewarding in itself, but you need to put so much into it. Um, it's just kind of hard to explain as you go into it. It's, it's not an eight to three job. It's not a nine month job. Um, it becomes part of your life and you just uh, expect that going in and devote all your uh, time while at school with really, really working with those kids and trying to make those connections that are so necessary to help them to, to learn what you want to share with them. I don't think I said that real good, but maybe you guys can add on to that. No, you, you said that fine. I, um, in today's society with the technology that we have, it's very difficult to keep up with the technology, but we have to remember that the, the younger uh, people that are coming in to teach have been exposed to that since they were tiny. And I mean, we started with the chalkboard and then we went to the whiteboard and now we have the smart boards and you know, we had no computers, no telephones or anything like that in the classroom. And so I feel like when I started teaching, we spent a great deal of time with the individual children. And I'm concerned that, I'm concerned and I hope that people, uh, young people that aspire to be teachers, don't get so caught up in all the, the gadgets and the, the technology. Not that that's not good. There's definitely the, the strong side of that. But I just don't want, I, I would advise uh, young people to realize that there still is that need for the personal connection, for that time, the one-on-one -on -one with kids so that they can have those relationships, so that they can relate to them, so that they can talk through things with them. If you're going into it just because you know technology well, um, maybe you can be the technology director or something, but I, I really hope and would uh, um, advise young people to, that are going into the education field to really make the effort to despite how they're pushed with the technology to not forget to just relate to the children and remember that they're living their lives at home and those things come with them when they come to school and we need to talk to them about things and remember that just because you think prepositions are really important that day, something at home might be a lot more important and that you need to make sure that you're relating with the children and opening their minds uh, not just to, uh, well, open your mind rather, open your mind to them in more ways than just relating the materials. That, that would be my advice to, ch to young people that are well, going into right. that. And being sensitive to their needs, whether, uh -huh. it's, whether it's right there in your classroom that day or like you said, outside of school. It's sensitive, that's the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would echo that too because I, I think that the connections that you make with the students are very important and if you think back perhaps to the teachers when you were a student who had the most impact it would be those who you had a special connection with in some way. You realized that they cared about you as a person Yes, and mm -hmm. that made the most difference to you it's maybe the teacher that you would look back and say that teacher made the most difference for me 
is that person and so you need to as a teacher find a way to connect with those individual students and know them let them know that you know about them as an individual in some way something that they like or care about or let them know that you care and then they're much more ready to to receive information from you and try their hardest to to learn and uh, that is so true if you just I and I'm not, you know, I'm definitely not uh, a great teacher, but I always felt luck that in the classroom, when I made the personal connection, then we could get past anything. Hi, I'm Mr. Barry Freisinger, and uh, I've been a teacher for 44 years. I got my start teaching at uh, Angola High School. I was a an Angola High School graduate and I went straight there without an interview from Butler University to work alongside my my uh, high school band director. I was there for 10 years. That's, those are hard questions or that's a hard question but I suppose um, the most memorable moment would have been at Angola when we won the Class B Indiana State Marching Championship and it was very much a surprise. I think the most satisfying thing about being a teacher would be the hope that um, you're doing some good for young people in terms of their work ethic and in my case in terms of their love for music and you hope you set a very good example everybody asks that question. Um, I'm gonna play a little golf, probably not too much. Um, what else? I play in three community bands, which I have been playing in for a while now. And I also probably will be supporting my wife in her efforts to uh, promote her, the book that she was recently published talk to your older teachers when you get there <laughs> try to get some advice from them don't don't be so quick to think that uh, even though I'm just thinking back even at myself when I came out of school thinking that I knew probably more than I really did um, I think there's always a tendency for for us when we're young to think that we know it all and to not gain ex you know knowledge from those who have been there that would be one bit of advice.